When you enter into a conversation or ask a question, how often do you ensure that shared context exists? Just so we have shared context. What the word context means is the situation or facts that can help explain the question, idea, or statement. Let me share a funny example of what happens when context isn't shared. My husband and I were wine tasting in Sonoma. It was the end of the day and we were both ravenous. We picked a charming restaurant with outdoor seating on the square in Healdsburg. Our priority was getting food and getting it fast. As the waitress approached our table to take our drink order, he immediately asked for a margarita and some burrata. A look of confusion crossed my face. Why in the world was he ordering a margarita after a day of drinking? I paused to process and then realized that my context was ordering drinks and his context was ordering food. He was placing an order for a margarita pizza, not a tequila and lime drink. Unfortunately, a lack of shared context is a challenge for many conversations. A study from Stanford University says that nine out of 10 conversations miss their mark. We live in a diverse world. In your workplace, there are people of different ages, ethnicities, genders, religions, and political views. All these differences mean that there's lots of opportunities for misunderstanding. Confirm context rather than assume that someone understands something the same way that you do. Don't confuse pizza and a drink. Let me walk you through the process of communicating and show you how context is critical. In all communications, there's a sender and a receiver. The sender has an intent for his or her message. When the message is sent, it has an impact on the receiver of the message. The intent and impact may line up or they may miss the mark completely. Underneath the sender and receiver is the context. If they're operating from two different positions, the chances for misunderstanding are very high. Provide the context at the beginning of the conversation and you'll radically reduce confusion or misinterpretation. One of the most critical times to set context is when a group is gathering to discuss a decision. There's so many reasons the discussion could be happening. There may be a desire to gather more information, or perhaps the group's being informed about a decision and discussing the consequences. Those are two very different intents. Without clarity, the meeting participants won't know how to bring their best to the conversation. While we're on the topic of decision-making, let me add a tip. Many leaders struggle because they don't define decision authority. Here's what happens. A leader comes to a meeting and tells the group that there's a decision to be made. Imagine that the group believes it's a consensus-driven decision while the leader plans to make the decision herself. If those meeting participants make a recommendation that's not acted upon, they can get discouraged and believe their input doesn't make a difference. The next time they participate in a meeting where the leader says a decision needs to be made, the shared belief that their input doesn't matter will cause a very different conversation to happen. The participants will hold back and the leader won't get the information she needs. All this can be avoided by setting context at the beginning of the discussion around the purpose of the meeting and how the decision will be made. A few tips to context setting. First, expect the unexpected. If you step into a conversation, assuming your conversation partner sees things the same way that you do, then you're setting yourself up for the conversation crazies. There's a fabulous quote that goes, I know you think you understand what you thought I said, but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard is not what I meant. Before you step into a meeting, begin a conversation or make a call, pause and define your intent. What do you wanna get out of the conversation? Help the other person know how to listen and respond by sharing and setting context. Set shared context by recognizing assumptions, asking clarifying questions, and validating your understanding. Here's an example doing all that together in one statement. I'm assuming that the conference begins at 8 a.m. with breakfast and then the first session starts at 8.30. Is that your understanding? Think about the meetings you participate in. Rather than dismissing small talk at the beginning as a complete waste of time, 
consider that it can be used to create shared context. That shared context creates connection, which leads to trust and improves conversational outcomes. Avoid being part of the statistic where your conversations are missing the mark most of the time. Context is key. Pay attention to it, choose it wisely, and always make sure it's shared. You will exponentially increase the effectiveness of your conversation.